Ok, bueno, buenos días para todos. Muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos hoy en nuestra última sesión de este curso de nanotecnología para la administración de fármacos herbales a cargo de nuestro invitado Fulbright, el profesor Jaswan Patak. Eh, hoy tenemos un sentimiento encontrado de felicidad por poder terminar eh, con éxito este curso, pero pues de tristeza por, pues por el final, ¿no? Porque siempre que se termina algo que uno ha disfrutado, eh, eh, pues, eh, pues genera un poco de, de frustración, digamos así. Eh, muchísimas gracias a todos los que nos acompañan, especialmente acá en el mismo, eh, la misma oficina, pero a los que están en línea también. Y hoy fui muy agradecidos con la presencia del profesor Nicolás Avilán de la Universidad Central. Eh, bienvenidos. Ahora más tarde daremos oportunidad para, para al final despedirnos del profesor Patak. Profesor Patak, it's a really pleasure, it's a honor for us to have you here again with our 12th uh, session of this Uh, workshop this course on nanotechnology for uh, drug delivery, herbal drug delivery. Thank you very much. We have to say uh, goodbye at the end of the, <laughs> this session. And um, okay, so please go ahead. Let me make some changes here. And... Muchas gracias, profesor Sidder. You know, it's almost, I have completed three weeks in Colombia, and I must share with you that every moment I have spent here, I enjoyed. The food, the place, I used to walk every day, five, six kilometers in different directions, and meeting people, even though I didn't know Spanish well, but I could communicate a little bit with them, with my uh, English to Spanish translation, and it was fun. And then I was just telling him that, you know, I would have applied for the citizenship of Colombia, but Professor Caesar said that you are not handsome enough to become citizen, <laughs> citizen of Colombia. <laughs> And I agree with him <laughs> because he said, no, 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 you can't get citizenship of Colombia because you are not enough handsome. We need handsome and beautiful people, not like you. I have you. So there is another lovely person is here now and she will prove that I'm correct. <laughs> I was telling that Professor Caesar told me that I cannot get the citizenship of Colombia because I am not handsome. Handsome enough. <laughs> so you need, I tried, you know, you need handsome and beautiful people to become the member of Colombia. Otherwise, that minimum requirement, that's what he told me. But anyway, so today in my last lecture, So I really appreciate you all attending my lecture. It's almost three weeks every day uh, we met and uh, I really enjoyed sharing whatever little I know with you all and I enjoyed the question answers you asked me and I hope I could satisfy your in, in, uh, questions. And, uh, Today we will be talking about nutraceutical nanoemulsion to deliver antioxidant for neurodegenerative diseases. So the first talk which I had was on herbal drug delivery. And now we'll talk about how it is utilized for neurodegenerative diseases, especially Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and some of the data about nutraceutical nanoemulsions. And it is a very good area, so we'll talk more about it when we go through the things. So 
Buenos Amo Colombia, y la gente de aquí. Mi nombre es Yeshwan Patak. Actualmente estoy en e USA. Soy profesor y decano asociado en la Universidad del Sur de Florida. Tenía que hacer farmacia. Estoy en Colombia como becario Fulbright especialista. So I'm going good. <laughs> <laughs> So sincere thanks, muchas gracias to Vinocidad Distrital Francisco Jose de Caldas for hosting me as a Fulbright Specialist here in Bogota. My sincere thanks to Rector and Dean and other administrative heads supporting my trip. Interestingly, I met the guru, the teacher of your Rector and she is in the same hotel, staying in Hotel Boutique. Her name is uh, Lorena Uden, and she is a professor in United Kingdom and she told me that your rector studied with him her, her in her lab and got her his PhD in computer sciences or electronics something oh, yeah, yeah and uh, they are organizing a big conference next year which is called uh, OKM organization of knowledge and management organizational knowledge and management and she was very happy that Uh, invited me to talk about conflict management in the organization and I have a very beautiful book there so she was very happy about that. My sincere thanks uh, sincere thank to Fulbright Specialist Commission of Colombia for supporting my trip to Bogota, Colombia and I will fail if I do not mention my sincere gratitude to most handsome professor <laughs> Cesar Aurelio Hereno, Hereno Piero. <laughs> being my host and incredible support for making my stay happy here but he was mean to me saying that i am not handsome <laughs> special thanks to him uh, abdulohum and shannon fleming of world learning and sergio villamil sanchez and sebastian villamizar and many other from colombian fulbright commission For their kind support, Professor Luis Reyes, I am going to meet them today, Juan Cruz and Willy Moreno, Luis Fernando, Cruz Cuerrega, and special thank to Professor Alexis Ortiz of International Office of UDFJDC and Alvaro Vasquez, uh, who encouraged me to apply for this Fulbright Specialist Fellowship and that is why I am here. Desde el fondo de mi corazón, I am sincerely thankful to you from the bottom of my heart. And apologies my Spanish pronunciation and I hope uh, if I made any mistakes in my presentation in last all day, days, my disculpas, <laughs> my apologies and mis disculpas por me, mi espanol. But next time if I come, I'll do much better in Spanish. For sure. I assure you. <laughs> so we'll talk about nutraceuticals. So nutraceuticals is a part food or part of food that allegedly provides medicinal and health benefits. So that is a simple definition. Including prevention of diseases. It may be a naturally nutrient rich or medicinally active food or it may be a specific component of the food. So nowadays a lot of foods are fortified. They call it fortified. So they have vitamins, minerals, everything is there. And that is called part of the nutraceuticals or you create herbal drugs and put them in dosage form, tablets or capsules or liquid oral and that becomes nutraceuticals. And nanotechnology, we already have seen it several times that it deals with the capability to image, measure, model, control, manipulate matter at dimensions roughly 10 raised to 1 to 100 nanometers and where novel interfacial phenomenon introduces new functionalities and this exceptional capability has led to vast array of new technologies that have impact on virtually every aspect of science and technology as well as human life. So nanotechnology in last 30 years have changed lot of our way of life, how we behave. And one of the best thing is cell phone. And I first time in my life I had the use of this when I was in Israel 30, 34 years back. And we, we were thinking of transporting application for my American Heart Association Fellowship. And with one button, pressing one button, my whole 30 pages application went to America. That was 
big thing for me. I never thought that it will go, but it went and I got it. So I was very happy about that and that is how the nanotechnology, at that time nobody was talking about nanotechnology because not many people were knowing, but now it has become a regular word everybody uses in their research. And it has changed the life of all of us in many ways, in aeroplane industry, in car industry, in healthcare, in surgery, in everywhere you will find electronics, everything is changed because of the nanotechnology in last 10-15 years. You know the quality has improved, the light, life of quality has improved because of the nanotechnology. And that is where uh, it is very important to know more and more about the nanotechnology and how its applications and it has an enormous application. As I mentioned, nano is too big. Applications everywhere, even the paints now, the paints you see, mm -hmm. there are, they use nanotechnology and the quality of paints has improved. So it is very interesting to see how the world is changing because of the nanotechnology and every aspect of our all food products have a coating inside which is nanoparticles. A lot of good things have happened there. So now we have to learn about nano emulsions. What are nano emulsions? So nano emulsions are two immiscible phase systems where one phase is dispersed into other phase in the form of small globules with the mean droplet size of 50 to 200 nanometers. So what you do is you take oil and water. If suppose you take oil and water and shake it, you will feel like the oil is distributed. But then after some time you put the beaker and the oil separates out, water separates out. So what you do is now you use surfactants, surface active agents and then start playing with the formulation and if you use appropriate surfactants combination, then those particles which are very fine can remain in water dispersed. And when your particle size becomes 50 nanometers, around 50 nanometers, then you see a clear liquid because 50 nanometers you cannot see with the eye. It doesn't give a normal emulsion will become milky. It will look like leche. Mm -hmm. But when it is nanoparticle emulsion, it will not look like leche, it will look like clear water because the particles are very small and that those are called transparent emulsions. So there is no oil, you cannot see the oil. It is dispersed in such a fine particle that it becomes clear water. You see, feel like it is clear water. But when you see under the microscope, then you see the oil globule mm -hmm. and that is called nano emulsion. Now you can imagine when you reduce the particle to smaller size and if you put the drug into your oil globule, enormous surface area and that's why you don't need that much drug. You can reduce the amount of drug to be given to the patient and that's how the enormous surface area is created. So there are two types of emulsion, one is called oil in water. So when you disperse oil in water, that is called oil in water, if you disperse water in oil, that becomes another emulsion where oil phase is larger than the water phase. In case of oil in water, oil is smaller than the water. That's why it is water phase is larger than the oil phase. And this is where the nano emulsion with particle size distribution between 50 nanometer appear to be transparent emulsion. Otherwise, they look like milky in nature, leche type. So this is your typical oil globule. So this is the lipid, you know, this is the oil globule. And then these are the surface active agents which surround the oil globule so it doesn't mix with water and there is a separation of and smaller the uh, oil globule it will become uh, you have to use a combination of the thing now antioxidant and neurodegenerative diseases so there are several neurodegenerative diseases nowadays it is growing as we have seen in the early lecture about application of nutraceuticals in chronic diseases. So in chronic diseases for senior citizens, one of the major challenges is Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's disease is when you remain, come to 60, 65, then you start forgetting. So people will say, oh, I don't remember the name. Earlier I used to remember all the telephone numbers. But now I don't remember my own number. And a day comes when you don't remember your own house and probably how your wife looks like. So that's the, and they, they don't recognize their own children. So this is what the Alzheimer's is. So 
uh, all these things mostly they are finding it out that uh, we have talked several times when there are free radicals in the cells which is called reactive oxygen species and that one electron is lost so it becomes very reactive and that type of free radicals if they exist in your cells which may play a role in heart disease, cancer, neurodegenerative conditions and other diseases. So if there are higher number of free radicals then you need to find out somebody who can take the electron which is lost. And antioxidants are the preparations or chemicals which take that extra electron and reduce the concentration of ROS or they can absorb the ROS and attach to their structure so that you can reduce the and that is where free radicals are molecules produced when your body breaks down food and when you are exposed to tobacco smoke or radiation so that is how the free radicals are so the less the more you smoke the chances of getting free radicals are more all different there are several reasons to create the free even our insecticide fertilizers have ability to create free radicals the food you eat, they have ability to create free radicals and that's where the challenge comes into the picture and that's what happens when you have uh, problems and that as you grow older and older, immunity goes down and then these free radicals become more prominent and create diseases in your body. Those are chronic diseases. So antioxidants are man-made or natural substances that may prevent or delay some types of cell damage. So these free radicals damage the cell and that's what happens in cancer or in all other things. So what you need is to, if you want to delay this cell damage and prevent, then you have to use some sort of antioxidants. And that's why people say that eat berries, mm -hmm. you know, berries have high level of antioxidants. So the more you eat strawberry or other blackberry, different types of berries are there, they have high level of antioxidant and those are good for you. Like that there are several foods, several herbs which have ability to reduce the free radicals in the body and they are known as natural antioxidant. Mm -hmm. There are synthetic antioxidant, there are natural antioxidant. So natural antioxidants are better than the synthetic antioxidants and that is where people are now moving towards uh, food in such a way that you have adequate supply of antioxidants in your food. One of the best antioxidant is vitamin C, vitamin E, these are good antioxidants. So if you are going uh, to beach and you want to take this, you apply vitamin E oil, it will prevent because vitamin E oil is a high in uh, it's very active antioxidant. And that is where a lot of preparations are there, cosmetic preparations with vitamin E, they call it, because it is good for skin and it prevents the skin cancer and also reduces the free radicals there. So diets high in vegetable and fruits, which are good sources of antioxidants have been found to be healthy and research has not shown antioxidant supplement to be beneficial in preventing diseases, but there are ex ex things are moving, yeah, science will prove that very soon. So, examples of natural antioxidants include vitamin C and you must have seen that if you uh, have cough and cold, in the beginning if you take 1000 mg of vitamin C, you can control your cough and cold. And normally they say that every week if you take at least 2-3 times vitamin E and vitamin C, then you will never suffer from some of the diseases because it's a regular and that's why you use lemon, correct? Lemon is full of vitamin C, orange is full of vitamin C, grapefruit full of vitamin C. So these are the fru fruits. If it is in your daily routine eating, you are better off because you will have a healthy lifestyle and that is how you build up your... Then there is a selenium, lipoic acid, glutathione and then there are carotenoids, beta-carotene, lycopene, lutein, zeaxanthin, these are all present in tomato, carrot and all those things. So your salad bowl can bring you all the antioxidants and this is where uh, you can learn to eat salad as much possible because it not only brings antioxidant but bring fiber. So if you eat fibers there is a chance that you build up the microbiota and once you build up the microbiota then 
the toxic things are eliminated with the microbe and you will rarely get colorectal cancer. So those who are in India, colorectal cancer is low percentage because we use curcuma. All our curries are always yellow. Everything we add curcuma in our curries, in dal, in lentils, everywhere we do curcuma is part of the thing. Then we add fennel, ajovan, we use cumin seeds. All these spices are antioxidant in nature. And that's where you can modify your food and it works very well. So about free radical oxidative stress and antioxidant. So free radicals are highly unstable molecules that are naturally formed when you exercise, when your body converts food into energy. And our body can also be exposed to free radicals from variety of environmental sources such as cigarette smoke, air pollution and sunlight. Is okay? Okay. So free radicals creation in the body is a natural process. But only thing is that if you use antioxidant, then the amount of free radicals which exist in body will be low. Lower the free radicals, better the health. Higher the free radicals, you are susceptible to, your immunity goes down and you are susceptible to the diseases. So, and you, even if you are walking and somebody else is smoking, you get the passive smoke. So, don't stand next to the person. I always make sure that if somebody tries to lit the cigarette, I run away from him. Because it is going to create free radicals in my body. Passive smoke is worse than the active yeah. smoke sometimes. And that is where you have to be cautious about that. So free radicals can cause oxidative stress. So it creates reactive oxygen species that builds up the oxidative stress. A process that can trigger the cell damage. So it if your free radicals are entering in your cell, then they will damage the cells. And then they will mutate the cell. So the mutation of the cells happens with this system. And that is where damaging cells is nothing but mutation. And that's how the cancer builds up. Your cancer cells are existing, but as soon as you have higher concentration of free radicals, the cancer cells will grow better. Because they have a possibility. So oxidative stress is thought to play a role in Variety of diseases including cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases and Alzheimer's disease such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, eye diseases such as cataracts and age related macular degeneration. So you must have seen that all my talk was related with this area. We talked about cancer, we talked about Alzheimer's disease, we talked about all ophthalmic disease and everywhere what was affecting free radicals the reactive oxygen species. The majority of the chronic diseases are related with free radicals and reactive oxygen species and herbal drugs can help you to reduce it down at a lower cost. Another thing is lower cost. So antioxidant molecules have been shown to contract oxidative stress in laboratory experiment. Uh, for example, in cells it reduces if you treat the uh, cell, damaged cells with oxidative uh, with your um, antioxidant, then it reduces the, and I am going to show you some of our experiments, how we found out it works in, and then in animal studies also they have proven that it works well. So however, there is a debate as to whether consuming large amounts of antioxidants in supplement from actually benefits or not. Now this debate is, I'll tell you, and I am a strong proponent of nutraceuticals and herbal drug, I believe in it. But the pharmaceutical industry doesn't want to believe in it. The reason is money. The herbal drugs are very cheap. You go to the produce market, you know, and then buy all these vegetables, you are healthy. But then how much you spend? Very few amount, you know. And you go to the pharmacy and you buy the thing, how much you spend? You bring large amount. So obviously those people who are in the business of making money, they try to create problems or such thing. They say, oh, no clinical study, don't mm -hmm. eat it, you know. We don't have documentation, we don't have this, we don't have that. Now for thousands of years, traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurveda has recommended this, antioxidants. In many ways they say, like, you know, chamomile. <coughs> chamomile is a tea. It gives you a good sleep and it costs you like 10 pesos. <laughs> Very cheap, you know, a box of chamomile tea, you'll get it for 
one dollar or two dollar or you know ten thousand ten mil or ten mil. Now one tablet cost you ten mil if you go to the so now and you are using this ten mil tea for whole month and you are getting good sleep. Then why you want to buy the pills? And the pills manufacturer will say no 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 don't take chamomile. There is no clinical study for that. And that's a they they try to put it. You know it's always there. There is also some concern that consuming antioxidant supplements with excessive doses may be harmful. Again, it is not proven. The other one is not proven. This one is also not proven. But they they will take the argument which is good for them. They will not take. And it, I told you already that I go to Indonesia every year. So most of the Indonesian doctors who are trained in the modern medicine, they will say, "Don't use this. Don't use that." And next day morning, they drink themselves. But in public, they cannot accept it because it looks like you are backward. If you say that I believe in herbal drug, then the modern scientist will say, "Oh, you are backward." You're... But now the things are changing. You know, it's a matter of time that things are changing. And I told you that one of the famous professor from Stanford, he said, "If my patient is benefiting with nutraceuticals, herbal drug, acupuncture, acupressure, massage, I am ready to take it as a therapy." I don't worry about. My ultimate aim is to make sure that my patient is cured. If it is cured by acupuncture, why not? With minimum expenses. And I worked in Dalian Medical University in China. So I used to work, and my professor was an expert in gastrointestinal surgery. So he used to do the surgery, open the man and cut something there, and then he will send the patient to the acupuncture guy. And the acupuncture guy will put all the pins around that, so he will numb the nerves, so he doesn't feel the pain. The patient after surgery doesn't feel the pain. Now you have option to take hydrocodone or codeine or Percocet, and create problem for you, or you take acupuncture and be happy with no pain. So this is the option, and this is what acupuncture will cost you very minimal, very small amount. Side no side effects. On, on the other counter, hydrocodone, uh, hydrocodone or Percocet, they create upset of the stomach. Many people prefer to have pain rather than the side effects because it is very difficult to bear the side effects. It disturbs the whole body. So this is where we are trying to find out that you know we should find out a medium way to make sure that there is an agreement. Between the modern science and herbal drug, ancient science. So, what are neurodegenerative diseases? So, neurodegenerative diseases are common and are strictly age-related. You know, you will never have neurodegenerative diseases in young people. Young people always remember everything. Like you all will remember all the numbers, everything, everything, all the roads. I don't. Mm -hmm. I forget. And it's normal because it is. It is related to age. Neurodegenerative diseases are related to age because. Your brain cells also age. Your body becomes weak and weaker as you grow older, and that's why uh, neurodegenerative are mostly age-related. So as the aging population is growing, you are seeing more and more neurodegenerative diseases. Earlier people used to die at 40, 45, 50, so they will never see Alzheimer's. In my childhood, I rarely interacted with a person who suffered from. Alzheimer, because in mm. uh, my childhood, most of the people used to die before fifty, sixty. Sixty was like a big achievement because they used to retire at fifty-five and then die at sixty. So uh, now the things have changed. Now people live for eighty, eighty-five, ninety, and then you know, yeah, and then the Alzheimer's you can see it because you don't remember. And it's a Uh, age-related thing, and for example, annual incidence of prevalence of USA are sixty-five percent suffer from Alzheimer's disease. Is thousand elderly people who are sixty, nine point five percent are suffer from uh, Parkinson disease, and all sixty-five percent of out of thousand people will suffer from Alzheimer's disease. So you can imagine, you know, point six five percent. So every person. About eighty is almost forgetful. You see them. If you go to nursing home, you will find them. They don't know their rooms also, so they put the number here. Mm -hmm. 
so that the nurses will know that which room number they go and they have the name tag so that they know because many times they don't remember their room <laughs> yeah one name tag <laughs> so it is so we did the uh, age which Yes, so they have find out the solutions how to give them the and many lines of evidence indicate that oxidative damage is involved in the pathogenesis of neurodegenerative diseases including Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease and ALS. So these are the reasons nowadays there are several reports which exactly shows that Alzheimer's disease is causing because of the oxidative stress, oxidative damage to the brain cells and then when you the oxidative damage you know these are two cells and each of the cell will have a synapse and this synaptic connection will transfer the message. Now as oxidative damage to the cell is gradually this synaptic connection goes away and then now there are two cells standing near each other but no communication and that's how you forget because the one cell doesn't communicate with the other cell because of the synaptic connection and that is nowadays you can see those synaptic connection you can virtually treat if you have uh, neuronal cells you can treat it with oxidative stress and you will find that the synaptic connections are broken mm -hmm. you can see under the scanning electron microscope it's very interesting to see that because i have a friend who is a professor and we used to have collaborate with for research so why nano emulsion for nutraceuticals now nutraceutical nano emulsion formulation can be a prototype to develop many similar formulation delivered active nutraceutical for various you know for herbal drugs most of the herbal drugs are hydrophobic in nature so we would like to find out if it if you can dissolve the herbal drug into oil then you can disperse it in water and then that oil globules will carry the herbal drug and if it is nano emulsion then it will need less amount of drug and this is where they are trying to find out that for hydrophobic materials, the nano emulsions, like for cancer also, they have developed the nano emulsions of curcuma, which can be injected because they are under 200 nanometers. Mm -hmm. So they can inject the curcuma nano emulsions and they use nano curcuma in the emulsion. And that's how it works. So you are now creating nano emulsions which are injectable. And injectable nano emulsions is very common thing because at least for 50 years, there are nano emulsions which are injected. They were not nano emulsions or micro emulsions injected for nutritional therapy. Suppose a person has 70-80% burn wounds. You know, they get burned. Mm -hmm. So the wounds are there. Everything is, the skin is gone, everything. Mm -hmm. In such scenario, to provide nutrients, you cannot provide water as a nutrient. So you have to have some oil thing, lipid thing, which sticks inside and remains otherwise it will be more irritating to the patient and that's why they created the nutrient supplement for especially burn patients and they in those days it, it used to be nano emulsion sometimes but they didn't call it nano emulsion but it's very comparable so because of their small size nanoparticles have excellent penetration property to ensure rapid delivery of high concentration of active ingredient to the cell membrane now it is smaller than chylomacron as I mentioned earlier, that our body, when you take oil, suppose you take oil in curry, that lipid is converted into chylomicron. They are lipid materials. And these chylomicrons are around 500 nanometers. If your nanoparticle, oil particle is less than 500 nanometers, then it can be taken up by lymph. And lymph system can transport it in the body because we have a very strong lymph system in the body. And that's where we are saying that and now people are accepting that it is a possibility. So a cell membrane, it can cross through the cell membrane because they are very fine particles. And bioavailability of lipophilic active ingredients can be substantially improved by delivery in nano emulsion. If you take lipophilic material orally, it is not absorbed. It goes away because the, the epithelial cell doesn't absorb the lipid things. So you have to find out how it can be absorbed. And that's where curcuma, if you give it in nano emulsion, it will be absorbed. If you give orally, unless it is dispersed in oil, it doesn't get absorbed. So our previous experience with nano emulsions have shown that the nano emulsions can behave like chylomacron and may be taken up by the lymphatic system in the body. 
and this will allow the nanoglobule to bypass the liver metabolism. So if you take anything orally, then it goes through liver and half of liver enzymes are very strong. So they eliminate most of the drugs or they disintegrate and it can reach the CNS system. That was our hypothesis. And now they are accepting that there is a limb system in brain and it can go. Uh, if the fatty acids and antioxidants are incorporated in nanoglobule, then they, they can read the brain tissues in due course of time and can enrich the brain tissues with fatty acids and antioxidants and reduce the oxidative stress in the brain tissues. And that's why people a lot of people are working on this application of nanoemulsions in nutraceuticals. So role of antioxidant curing neurodegenerative diseases, it was previously shown that antioxidants such as melatonin potentiate nerve growth factors mediated synaptogenesis and in PC12 cell. So people are shown, you know, this is the synaptic connection. If you see between the cells, the small line is there, those are synaptic connection. And those synaptic connections get broken with the oxidative stress. And then if you use antioxidant, then they can be re-established, synaptic connection within them. This is a typical cell, neuronal cell there. So PC12 cells treated with ascorbic acid showed to elevate neutrite growth and synaptic interconnections in the cell treated with ascorbic acid revealed to have more number of neurotic projections which we don't see in the Alzheimer's disease model. So here if you treat it with ascorbic acid then it shows the synaptic connections are increased and that is the advantage of antioxidant in treating the neurodegenerative diseases. So nano nutraceuticals applying nanotechnology to nutraceutical products and providing drug delivery system to deliver the nutraceutical ingredients such as vitamins, antioxidants, the novel concept and the formulation we prepared uses the technology. So that is what we are talking about. So we developed a formulation with nano emulsion having global size 50 to 300 nanometer. The formulation we have developed is soybean oil based nano emulsion with several ingredients including the antioxidant. So now uh, we will uh, look at our thing what we have done. So antioxidant nano emulsions are adjunct therapy for neurodegenerative disease. That was the title of my grant. I got money for doing all this research work. So it was. So this is your hydrophobic phase or oil phase, and outside is your hydrophilic phase. And these are the combination of surface active agents. So surface active agents have two types of portions, and and the portions are. I'm sorry. I will need one of the. Yeah. Sorry, let me yeah. make the change. So, the, is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry. They really unstops hearings. Yeah. <laughs> so the surface act, every surface active agent has two portions. So one is a long chain. Normally it is carbon. The longer the chain, it becomes hydrophobic. And this is shorter area that is called hydrophilic. So if this is big and the chair is small, this is called hydrophilic surfactants because the hydrophilic portion is bigger. If this is long, chain is long, then it is hydrophobic surfactant and hydrophobic is water heating. They don't like water because carbon doesn't dissolve in water. And that's how, but there are certain molecules which are balanced. So the chains are balanced. So when it, this is a oil globule, okay. If this is the oil globule, 
then if you use this surfactant then it will look like this So what is happening is the hydrophilic portion gets into water and the lipophilic portion gets into the oil and now this becomes so compact that the oil gets dispersed and don't come back. Agglomeration doesn't happen, it don't come back and this is how these nano emulsions are prepared and this is they call it HLB. So that is called hydrophilic, hydrophilic lipophilic balance. So it is normally considered to be 1 to 14 numbers. So at the 7 number, the hydrophilic and lipophilic groups are same at the 7 number. Towards 1, you have more hydrophilic surfactant. Towards 14, you have more hydrophobic surfactant. So based on the use, like so. When you use soap, what happens is soap dissolves the dirt matter and removes from the cloth. It doesn't dissolve actually, but it surrounds the dirt matter and take it out. That's why when you apply the soap on your cloth, the material black thing goes away. That is called uh, surface, surface activation. And this surface activation is used, so you normally use a combination of surface activation. And once you use the combination of surface activation, you can create, now you will understand that when you adjust this like this, then each of these has a charge. So based on the structure, it can carry a negative charge or a positive charge. So if this globule carries a negative charge, they will reject repulse each other. And that's why they will stay stable in the, in the globule form. And this negative charge or positive charge directly tells you what is the zeta potential. Now zeta potential is the compact, you know, there will be a very compact negative charge here. They are very close. Then the next stage is The positive charge will be here because it will attract and then positive negative are dispersed. So the difference between this point and this point is called zeta potential. The higher the zeta potential better the stability for the immersion so that is how uh, this whole emulsion formulation is a very interesting thing to uh, for uh, all the herbal drugs there. I'll leave it for a moment. People can write it down. Yeah. No, no problem. So in this figure, you can very well see, so there is a surfactant, red is a surfactant and the blue or bluish green is a co-surfactant there and it accommodates itself or it arranges itself around the interface. So there is a water phase, there is a oil phase and there is an interface. You, you must have studied this, no, in the physics they teach yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. So the interface, if you the purpose of the surfactant is to reduce the surface tension or interfacial tension because it is uh, interfacial tension is reduced and that's where the reduction of interfacial tension is because of the surfactant and then microemulsions are liquid dispersions of water and oil that are made homogeneous, transparent or translucent and thermodynamically stable. As you put the particle size smaller and smaller, this particle become thermodynamically unstable because they are more active, they have more energy. 
when you apply energy to reduce the particle size. And now the surfactants will reduce the surface tension and reduce the surface energy. That is the purpose of surfactants. And that's how surfactants and co-surfactants have diameter of the droplets in the range of 100 to 1000, uh, 10 to 100 nanometers or angstrom. And this is where the nano emulsions can be created and it is very important for the system. So uh, in our grant, we had developed several nano emulsions for different with different uh, antioxidants like vitamin E, lipoic acid, CoQ10 enzyme, squalene, resveratrol, and glutathione and combination of these oxygen that was my part of the uh, grant thing. And we will look at, uh, so all these nano emulsions which were we were prepared in the lab, like here, you can prepare these nano emulsions here, you need an ultrasonicator. If you have a good ultrasonicator, then you can prepare the nano emulsion. But the stages of nano emulsions is you create a primary emulsion and primary emulsion you can use rotors. If you use the rotors for 30 minutes, then the oil is dispersed and the surfactants are dispersed. And then you ultrasonicate the nano emulsion. Then you get the nano emulsion. It's very simple technique to, and it is very stable. So it is 50 to 350 nanometers polydispersity index was 0.005 to 0.375, so it, is, it was less than that. And we use the Malvern particle size analyzer to decide. So it was for all the uh, particle size uh, things. So then we measure the pH of nano emulsions and the pH range between 4.5 to 7.3. Now pH is directly related to what type of drug you are using, first thing. Mm -hmm. What type of surfactants you are using and what type of oils you are using. So based on that, you have different types of uh, pH ranges for each of these and the pH ranges will decide what is the zeta potential there because pH is the representation of the zeta potential there. And the average viscosity of the nano emulsions range from 0 0.5 to 3.75 centipoids, uh, micro centipoids. So this is a typical scanning electron microscope study of the control of nano emulsions without any antioxidant. So normally you will find the without any antioxidant, the particle size was much smaller with the tonication and all those things. As you incorporate the drugs into the system, it will go uh, slightly bigger uh, particle size. So scanning electron micro study of the control nano emulsion with antioxidant vitamin E, you will find that in the previous slide, they were in 30, 50, 60. Now the particle size is 101, 88, 90. Uh, so it is growing because of the addition of vitamin E into the system. Then we studied the, uh, this was a report which was done for antioxidant nano emulsion adjuvant therapy neurodegenerative disease. So plasma and brain squana wheel concentration in time propulsion. You will find that if you put it in nano emulsion, then over the period of time for almost two hour, two days, 24 hours, only 10% of the drug was released. So it can release drug for a long time in the body. And that is the advantage of nano emulsion. So you can see the drug release over the period of time uh, in uh, delayed drug release in the system. Then we uh, so looked at the plasma concentration of the drug. So when you inject oral, it, it will raise the plasma concentration. So when you give the dose of nano emulsion, it raised the plasma concentration and over the period of time, gradually it went down because there was a sustained release of the drug from the emulsion. So it was still maintaining the level for a while and then by 12 hours it was all gone. So this is the plasma concentration of uh, the neurodegenerative disease. Then oxidative st stress comprises of immune response by altering cell functions and decreasing cellular proliferation, the movement of cell toward the site of infection, chemotaxis and the engulfment of digestion of foreign material as phagocytosis. So buildup of free radicals also may heighten the inflammatory response to the production of excess of tumor necrosis factors, TNA factor. So free radicals can also increase the incidence of CD4 cell apoptosis, a type of programmed cell death that may be caused by erroneous stimulation and is thought to be by some researchers to increase drastically in neurodegen. So the apoptosis is killing of the cells and that happens because of the oxidative stress buildup in the neuronal cells. And oxidative stress has also been implicated in neurodegenerative muscle wasting and weight loss as well as dementia and neuropathy. So there are reasons 
why people start suffering from dementia is the oxidative stress which is built in the brain cells and there are reports on that. So we studied the stability studies of our nano emulsions and stability studies of the nano emulsions were conducted at two temperatures, one at 5 degrees centigrade like in the refrigerator and second one at room temperature. Now with nano emulsion the problem is that the particles are very small, they are thermodynamically very active. So if you use higher temperature, it will break because there will be more, higher temperature puts more energy into the system and that's why nano emulsions have to be stored at normal temperature or lesser temperature to make it. So physical chemical parameters such as pH, viscosity, scanning electron microscope, characterization, polydispersity, polysize distribution were studied and it was observed that the emulsions were stable at room temperature for more, more than six months. And subsequently we found out that our nano emulsions were stable for two years in the normal temperature which is a good thing to happen. And uh, then we recent studies reported application of nano emulsion improving the viability and brain transport of drugs Panavir upon administration in novel nano emulsion formulations and that was, the, that was in 2008. You know our previous publications in 1989-90 uh, we could not put nano emulsion as I mentioned. But then subsequently people have published it. So presently our nano emulsions are being evaluated for cellular studies with neuroblastoma cells to understand the impact of antioxidant delivered in the form of nano emulsion on growth of synaptic connection. And we are studying the distribution of nano emulsions in the body when administered orally using bioimaging techniques. We also study impact of oral antioxidant nano emulsions on Alzheimer mice model and the antioxidant effect on neurobiomarkers. So now natural products, how we are using, so one example I would like to bring it to your notice is that we did the nano emulsions. So nanotechnology enhanced curcumin, symbiosis of ancient wisdom of the East with the modern medical science. So what we did was curcumin is a curcumin or curcuma, is a yellow polyphenol extracted from the rhizome of turmeric curcuma longa and turmeric curcula longa L is the shining star among the cornucopia of traditional medicinal plants. You know, curcuma is used in almost everywhere here also. All over the world, curcuma is a normal natural herb which is used by all the people around the world. And they were using it for thousands of years. But people want clinical study. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, so it has a long history of usage in traditional medicine in India and China. And ancient Indians have known the medicinal property of turmeric curcumin for several millennia. We used it. This is the curry. Now in our, as you know, I am a Hindu. We have many gods. Yeah. So when we pray the gods and worship the god, what we do is we apply the turmeric. Mm -hmm. Turmeric powder to the god. Every day. Then a woman who is married, she will apply turmeric here every day. Mm. Turmeric and kumkum, you know, you Indian ladies put the yeah, yeah. dot. Yeah, so that is made up of turmeric. Now you can imagine that turmeric remains here, gets absorbed over the period of time because it remains with you for at least 10 to 12 hours. And then we use turmeric in curries every day. Every curry in India, we don't use turmeric only when somebody is dead in family. Because turmeric offers a color. When you put a color, that means you are exhibiting happiness. So we say that when the death happens in family, we don't use turmeric for few days. Mm -hmm. And then again we use it. After 10th day we do use it. So our death ceremonies survive for 10 days. And on 14th day we start using turmeric again. But death is uh, considered to be a sad scenario in the family. So they say, okay. And that's how, so turmeric and all these things, you know, these are all spices. We use it regularly. This is a turmeric plant, curcuma plant. I don't know if you have seen it. But uh, you know, the cur curcuma and ginger plants have beautiful smell. It's very, perfume is very good. And this is what nanotechnology. So I'm showing this use of herbal drug and use of nanotechnology, symbiosis. So the cultivation of turmeric plant began much before the Harappan civilization, it's 3000 years before Christ. So at least now 5000 years old, there is a tradition of 
using curcuma in India. Shushruta, the great Ayurvedic person, he has Ayurvedic scientist, has put use of recommend the paste based on turmeric for relieving food poisoning effect. Turmeric was introduced in China by India 700 AD and has been used to be long as a medicinal herb. It has been used in Ayurvedic medicine internally as stomach tonic and bold blood prepare and lot of there lot of uses of curcumin are there. So curcumin is a bioactive polyphenol which is diafuroferuloyl methane C21H20O6 with the ability to prevent and cure diseases. Curcumin also contains 2 to 5 percent of curcumin alone and cur commercial curcumin contains three main types of curcuminoids. Uh, curcumin, uh, curcuminoids are two, three different types which is 77 percent is high one and second one is 18, 17 percent, third one is. So several analogs of curcumin have been synthesized and studied as tetrahydrocurcumin and 4-hydroxy, 4-methoxybenzoic acid methyl ester. But now what is happening is all now scientists are accepting that if you use the whole curcuma, you have a better effect. Mm -hmm. If you use one of these, you don't get the effect. Mm -hmm. So it is a combination of all these things that bring the antioxidant effect and not individually. So they tried to separate it out and try to get a free one single medicine drug, but it didn't work with curcumin or many other herbal drugs also. And so this is the effective delivery of curcumin in chronic neurodegenerative diseases using nanotechnology. So you can use, uh, curcumin is useful in cataract because of the anti inflammatory activity. It is used in Alzheimer's disease, uh, different multiple challenges in the brain, neurodegenerative diseases. Then it is also used for inflammation of muscles. You know, I used to play hockey in my childhood. Mm -hmm. So when you play hockey, you get hit by the ball very heavily mm -hmm. and then it swells. So I will go home and my mom will take onion, put a lot of turmeric, warm it and then put it in a cloth and then touch the hot thing on the inflammation. Next day morning swelling gone. No problem. That is the effect of turmeric and I have experienced it myself. Now how much it cost? Very little. Mm -hmm. But that's why when I was a student, I used to learn a lot of things like poultice. Poultice was one of the pharmaceutical products. Mm -hmm. In last 30 years, all those things have gone. They are not there because they are very cheap. So people, the industries want you to buy more costly material than the cheap thing. So they started objecting the use of that. Yeah. And then they said, hey, not there. So they don't teach us. In pharmacy, We I have learned maceration, percolation. Now they don't teach it. Because maceration, percolation is to create extracts of herbal drugs, different ways, which are very useful. But they don't. Like in our childhood, we used to have a product called gripe water. And gripe water was extract of fennel, ajovan, cinnamon, some of the herbs. And it was so good for the babies because when babies drink milk, they get indigestion and this gripe water will help them to digest. Very simple, very cheap product. It was banned by FDA afterward that there are no clinical studies, it's not healthy for children and they banned it. <laughs> and very cheap product and that's the sad part of this. So it is also used in cardiovascular diseases. Turmeric is very useful because it is anti-inflammatory. Most of these cardiovascular diseases are inflammation, myocardial infarction, atherosclerosis, abnormal cholesterol level, heart attacks, all these are. So if you have regular intake, so still, if you do not maintain the lifestyle, you will get the diseases. So it is not simply taking the curcuma, but also you have to maintain the lifestyle, healthy exercises, healthy eating habits. And all. So many areas now people are doing researches to find out application of curcuma and other antioxidants which are and most of these diseases are created because of the ROS and anti-inflammation of the system. Now they have shown that curcumin can work with so many receptors. They say there are so many receptors, so inhibition of inflammatory pathways by curcumin this is a published paper in Journal of Biochemistry and Cell Biology, which is a very good paper uh, journal. And they have shown that curcumin can inhibit so many receptors because they all cause reactive oxygen species and different types of interaction in anti-inflammatory. And then curcumin has applications in liver disease, lung disease, all these various diseases. And not only curcumin, they are now finding out many other 
herbal drugs also that which have multiple application it is very difficult for the western medicine to understand that you can have one drug with multiple applications because they think though that is not possible because they, they have one book one thing you know that type of same thing is applied in science that only one medicine one receptor it doesn't work one medicine can work in many receptors so they i have mentioned again i want to repeat it one more time that for last several year the whole western medicine or western science try to find out the linearity and human being is a complex person human being today whatever i am i will not be same tomorrow it's like a flowing water of river mm-hmm. if you say that water river is stable no it's not because it is moving it is a good water stagnant water becomes spoiled moving water doesn't get spoiled same thing with human being our body also changes every day so it is very difficult to understand so it is a complex system it is not a simple system the effect of curcumin on various pro inflammatory diseases this is what a paper was published there and so challenges in curcumin delivery are only very few are undetectable levels of suppose you take curcumin you cannot find out the level in the blood and that is what the modern medicine want that how much curcumin is in your blood then only you will say that it will work but it's uh, to some extent you have to find out why it is not so oral administration of curcumin doesn't help low bioavailability of curcumin is a challenge and it has been attributed to very low aqueous solubility because it is not soluble in water curcuma and you will get yellow color but you will find that if you take one spoon of curcuma and put it in water after some time the yellow color goes away because the powder doesn't dissolve in water so tendency to degrade in gastrointestinal tract and in the physiological environment and high rate of metabolism and rapid systemic elimination and the low bioavailability of curcumin has far limited its medical use that is what the challenge was with curcumin from the modern perspective so nanotechnology drug delivery approaches have the potential of rendering hydrophobic agents like curcumin dispersible in aqueous media and thus circumventing the pitfalls of poor solubility and that's what we try to do we use nano curcumin in our emulsion now you will find that there are several uh, references where they have used curcumin for anti microbial curcumin nanoparticle polymeric nanoparticles for encompa- encapsulated curcumin so you will find oil in water nano emulsion for curcumin curcumin loaded solid lipid nanoparticles so there are several papers and they have been using nanotechnology for delivering the curcumin in many different ways and trying to find out their applications in different areas so there is another curcumin which is called thera curcumin a new curcumin formulation with markedly improved absorbability is the japanese japanese researchers have recently developed a new form of nanoparticle curcumin nano curcumin that is called thera curcumin and containing 10% of curcumin 2% of other curcumin it's a combination of all it's not only one curcumin but it is common and it has improved the use 30 fold improvements in bioavailability as compared to conventional curcumin and it shows excellent safety profile and high dose level so curcumin thera curcumin can be used promising tool to evaluate anti cancer potential curcumin in clinical trials and that is what people are working on it to use this thera curcumin for the anti cancer drug there are several publications which show the applications like curcumin polyvinyl pyrrolidine nanoparticles enhance antioxidant and anti hepatoma activities curcumin nanoparticles highly potent antimicrobial properties cytosan pva curcumin silver nano composite antimicrobial film for wound dressing so they are creating like you know i i have used curcumin in my home mm-hmm. for wound dressing you know anti inflammation now they have published the papers on this now my mother will laugh because she has been using that for all her life why to need why you need a paper yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is how the western western thing is so curcumin mp mpeg pcl myself call for colon cancer therapy and they have published this in nanoscale journal you know they have published all these papers in very good journal curcumin loaded bpc and nanoparticle in and transport of curcumin to the brain and you will find that most of the authors are either indian or chinese because these are the two countries they believe in it you know you need to believe mm-hmm. to your hypothesis if you don't believe then you will not touch it you know the, mm-hmm. so that's the another thing which is important this is published in nanotechnology biology and medicine curcumin <coughs> loaded lipo pi complex 
I have water in my bag. Can you give me my bag? There is a bottle. I think you will see it. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> So co-formulation of doxorubicin and curcumin in the clinical management of leukemia. Now these are subsequently, yesterday I have shown you several patents of anti-cancer drug and curcumin because of the application. So what we did was we incorporated the theracurcumin, nanocurcumin in the nano uh, emulsion. This is the distribution of you know, nanoparticles, they call it uh, physical characterization of curcumin nano emulsion. And we kept it for three months, which is two years uh, stability. So particle size distribution was 259 after three months of stability. One year of stability study, it was 314 nanometers. Electrical mobility was 2.53, 2.73. So there was not significant change in the physicochemical properties of the nano emulsions after one year. And we did the same thing after two years also. So this is a typical picture of uh, scanning electron microscopy of the nano emulsions, it, you will find that there are very fine nanoparticles and then there are some of them are bigger in the size. Then what we did, uh, you have seen this slide, but again the NLRP inflammasome is a protein which is in the body which causes the uh, anti-inflammation. And that's where host derived metabolites are cholesterol, oxyaldehyde, uric acid, amyloid peptide, ATP, ROAS, ceramides and all these biomarkers subsequently get, get into metabolic syndrome like cardiovascular diseases, gout, diabetic kidney diseases, beta cell dysfunction, adipose tissue inflammation and hyperglycemia. So these NLRP in, uh, inflammasomes also builds up insulin resistance in diabetic patients. And if you can reduce the concentration of NLRP3 then you can control these diseases. And this is where so what we did was we tried to see curcumin inhibit the ROS mediated damage to the neuronal cells. So we took human neuroblastoma cells, SK and SH, and they were differentiated with retinoic acid for 15 days, treated with retinoic acid. And then differentiated SK and SH cells were treated with hydrogen micromolar of reactive oxygen species, that is hydrogen peroxide. When we treated that, uh, and then we co-treated it with 250 nanometers and 500 nanomoles of curcumin for 24 hours. So what we have seen that cells which were treated with 100 micromolar of ROS alone were served as vehicle with ROS and cells which had neither ROS nor curcumin were served as the vehicle without ROS and cellular morphology was observed. So what we took, we took the cells treated with retinoic acid for two weeks and then treated with H2O2. So they were oxidative damage was created in those cells and then oxidative damage created cells were treated with curcumin and we had a plain uh, cells without any treatment of retinoic or hydrogen peroxide then hydrogen peroxide treated and then curcumin treated and that's how we studied the synaptic connections of those. So uh, differentiated human cells were co-treated with uh, ROS, H2O2 and 215 and uh, curcumin Morphology of only ROS treated cells showed gross reduction in cell number and apoptotic cells. Cellular morphology indicate that curcumin co-treatment protects neuronal cells from ROS mediated damages. So what we have shown is that if we take the uh, neuronal cell treat with hydrogen peroxide, the death is very high because of the oxidative stress. But if we treat with curcumin, then the death is much lower. And that's how we showed that curcumin can prevent the death of oxidative stress and that is the reason is uh, why it is there and then we also studied the inflammasome activation so thp1 monocyte differentiated activated macrophage and treated with atp a known nlrp nalp3 inflammasome activator in the presence of absence of control and curcumin conjugated nano emulsion capsaic one release and is in indicative of so capsule capsaic one is a biomarker that tells you whether inflammasome is higher or lower and that we studied and curcumin treated cells show a decrease in capsaic activation and secretion in vitro. This decreases the capsaic 1 activity correlated with decrease in IL-1 beta processing. Now IL-1 beta processing another inflammasome like 
NLRP3. So their concentration went down with the treatment of curcumin and this is what we have shown that curcumin 25 microgram has reduced the uh, concentration, inflammatory activation there. Then we studied the IL-1 beta secretion and we found that with the curcumin treatment the IL-1 beta secretion was significantly reduced. So effect of curcumin treatment on IL-1 beta secretion in the above experiment THP1 macrophages were activated with nigrisin. Now nigrisin is another chemical which activate the inflammasome. So you treat the cells with nigrisin so that the inflammasome concentration goes up. And then you treat it with curcumin and the inflammasome concentration will go down. And that is how IL-1 beta we showed that curcumin reduces this system. So our summary of work of uh, use of curcumin is curcumin treatment augments the reactive oxygen species mediated neuronal cell damages. Curcumin treatment mediates reduced IL-1 beta secretion. It also inhibits the capsaicin one cleavage and secretion. And curcumin treatment inhibits the effect of NLRP3 inflammasome activator nigrisin and ATP. And that's how it can be utilized for Alzheimer's disease or all different types of uh, inflammatory diseases. So what we suggest is that nanotechnology enhance curcumin symbiosis of ancient wisdom of the East with the modern medical science. Lot need to be done and great potential for future development. Now suppose you have a herb in Colombia which has not been explored. Now you can try to put it in nano and see if it has anti inflammatory use or not. And you can explore some of these herbal products of Colombia for such type of application. So these are some of my publications you have already seen. So, Muchas gracias. And uh, that was the talk. So if you have any questions, I will answer and then I will talk about the writing of the paper okay, for okay. 10 minutes. Okay, okay. So let me open the microphones. Do you have any questions? Any questions for me? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, how, the, how do the effects of curcumin depends on temperature? I mean, when cooking, we need to warm, warm up the curcumin, so it is better for the curcumin effects, or it is better if we can consume, eat the curcumin at a room temperature. You know, the curcumin is a earth, correct? Mm -hmm. So what happens is, if you like, there are many products nowadays in market. Here also you might be getting curcumin tablet capsules. But the curcumin capsule absorption is very low. The reason is curcumin is hydrophobic in nature. So because it is hydrophobic in nature, unless you dissolve it in a hydrophobic carrier, it will not be absorbed as much. So what you do is like we put curcumin in curry. What we do is we add the curcumin in oil. And the curcumin is uniformly distributed in oil. And that's why all the Indian curries will have yellow color, which is uniformly distributed. Mm -hmm. So curcumin is uniformly distributed in oil. So in all these medicine, traditional Chinese medicine or herbal medicine, it is very important what kind of carrier you are using for delivering the drug. And that's where if it is a hydrophobic material, then you need to find out a hydrophobic carrier. In many of the Ayurvedic medicines are given in honey. Because honey provides an environment to the herbal drug to be absorbed very quickly. Many of the herbal drugs are given with milk. Another thing, it's very interesting that if I have a sore throat, I put the curcuma in milk and boil it. Now milk has got lipid particles. So if you boil curcuma in water, the after some time, curcuma yellow color will not be there. It will become transparent water. But if you boil the curcuma in milk, leche, the leche remains yellow. It doesn't separate out. Which means the curcumin particles get into the oil globules of milk. And milk is a nanoparticle. <laughs> milk globules, if you see milk under the scanning electron microscopy, you will find that it is an emulsion. The drug or the oil globules are distributed evenly in emulsion. That's why I was telling that the best are nanotechnology expert in mother nature. 
we cannot reproduce milk that type of natural milk but milk is a distribution of lipid particles in water and when you boil curcuma with milk all the curcuma gets into the lipid part of the milk and it becomes yellow but in water it becomes it separates out so obviously the carrier to deliver the drug delivery system is very important for herbal drug and that's why i said that nano emulsion becomes a good carrier for herbal drug because most of the herbal drugs are hydrophobic in nature and if they can go into the oil and then get absorbed thank you so much questions <laughs> eh, alguna pregunta en el chat ah, por acá una pregunta pueden preguntar en español ah caram there is a question here curcumin is very beneficial yes we should try to grow it uh, to preserve and to make preserve it not so expensive that's correct because curcumin is grown here because I went to Mori Flores Mira the lady Flores. Adriana Mira Flores mm -hmm. she grows curcumin She has a big project, very nice project. She has done developed several herbal drugs that farm, and then she has uh, developed a grass which was there in Colombia mm -hmm. and it was gone. So she reinstituted. Then she is uh, she has another project where uh, she is building up the colonies of guinea pigs because in early days guinea pig was a good staple food for the Native American. It was high in protein. So the guinea pigs gone. We don't see guinea pigs many. That's what she was telling. So they are building a, a nice project. She builds up guinea pigs and then transfer the colonies to the Sierra, Santa Marta, and Sierra Nevada. tomorrow. Yeah. Mm. Tomorrow I am going to meet a lot of Native Americans. Some 50 people are coming for the conference here. Tomorrow morning I am going to Santa Marta to meet the people there. Nice. So, but it is a great project to see if you go on that side, talk to her name is Adriana Salazar and she is a master's, she has master's in hospitality management, but she got involved in this. So she works with the Native Americans and does a lot of good work, very nice work she does. Okay, so questions, comments, so, so no you, question, you told sir. me you want to... I will explain. Small thing, okay. very quickly. Yeah. And after that, we are going to do some words, uh, final words. Okay, you will give it. Okay, I will finish my things in 10 minutes. Okay. Because I have my time up to okay. 11 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I normally talk to my students. So, that's my favorite thing. I talk to my students and It will not take much time. Okay, so what I want to show you is correct. You saw this? Now what you do is you put a thing like this here I'm not very good at drawing but it looks like a mice yes. sounds good? <laughs> more or less more or less <laughs> and then if you do like this an elephant look like yes. Very good. Very close. Flower. You can recognize that it is elephant. Uh, of course, it's an African. Okay. <laughs> this year, then no, Indian. So this is elephant. Now, what is the difference between mice and elephant? You tell me first. What is the difference between mice and elephant? <laughs> Size. Yes. Only size? Size. Okay. What other thing? Similarity. You eat no carnes. 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 What is the difference in terms of carnes? Elephant has high carnes. 
lot of meat. Rat has very little meat. Correct? So difference between mice and elephant is the amount of meat. Make sense? Good. But the skeleton is same. Unless you have a skeleton, like human, we have a skeleton. If the skeleton start getting off, imbalance, then you start bending like this. Sounds good? In Parkinson's skeleton gets, then you do this because your control is gone. So skeleton is most important for every animal. And only difference is you put the meat. You can create same skeleton, but you will create a rabbit. You can have dog, you can have pig, and you can have elephant. elephant. Every animal has skeleton. But the amount of meat is different. Make sense? Okay. So, the same thing you use for scientific writing. So, you have short communication. Sounds good? Short communication. You find out something, you want to communicate in the journal, then it becomes a short communication. Then you have a research paper. So short communication can be around 5 to 10 pages. Research paper will have 20 to 30 pages. Sounds good? Research paper, yeah, yeah. so many graphs, pictures, table of spacing. Yeah. Then you come to a review. Around 30 to 45 pages. And you can come to write a chapter. 45 to 60 pages. Sounds good? Yeah. Now whether it is short communication, mice, or whether it is chapter, elephant, it needs skeleton. Without the skeleton, it will not stand on its own. Make sense? So, if you decide that this is what you want to do, then your skeleton, how the skeleton will look like? So, anything you write, First, you need a title. Correct? The title should be short and exactly send the message what is in the whole body of the research paper. If your title is too big, nobody will accept it. So, short, crisp, and to the point, title is very important. Then you need authors. Sound good? So, till you become associate professor, you should always put your name as first author because you get the credit for publication. If you don't put your name as first author, then for promotion and tenure, you have a problem. <laughs> so I always say that if you are assistant professor, don't run the charitable institution. Don't give credit to other people because you will not get promotion. In America, if we, if we expect like 12 papers, if out of 12 papers, at least 8 should be first author, otherwise you don't get credit for promotion. Then affiliation. So you like digital, you know, universitas and then department of physics or department of chemistry, whatever. So this becomes your one page. Sounds good? And then always they need keywords. So, keywords are 5 to 7, 8 maximum, which you can Google and find out. Those are the keywords, very important keywords. And this is all one page. Then the second page is abstract. 300 to 350 words. Now, if you write two pages of abstract, it won't work. You need to have abstract, very short, sweet, but abstract should sh show what you have done, what is the result and what is the conclusion in two, two sentences. And that is most important. So this becomes your second page. 
then comes introduction now introduction should be 10 to 15 percent for anything maximum 10 to 15 percent so for short communication it will be only one page introduction because the total pages are 10 for research paper it will be two pages or maximum three pages for review again introduction will be a little longer so based on inter if you write 10 pages introduction obviously the reviewers are going to throw the paper off you need to have maximum 10 to 15 percent introduction now writing the introduction is a skill so what you do in introduction if it is your one then 1.1 1 .1, 1 1.2 1.3 so you take one sub thing and write three sub things and for each of them you write one paragraph only so it is only one paragraph each now when you write one paragraph each it becomes 1.1 1.2 1.3 that is one page because every printed paper we we'll have three paragraphs in one page. Then you have two and three. 2 .1, 2 .2, 2 .3, 3 .1, 3.1, 2.2, 2.3, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. Again, each only one paragraph. So what you write is only one paragraph. But you need to find out the skeleton. And then this becomes three pages. Sounds good? Then we'll go to references. For a good paper, based on what you are writing, mice or elephant, the references are different. So for a review article, you need to write references around 50 to 60. But I always tell my students that suppose you are writing the paper in 2023, then do not pick up any reference before 2017, because that is obsolete. So references should be after 2017. Five years. So references you put 50 to 60, then that becomes six pages. Normally a complete reference will be 10 pages per reference. So now we have one page, second page, 3 plus 2, 5 plus 6, 11. So if you want to write a review here, 30 pages. So 11 pages are now done. Then you write here future trends. So future trends you can write for one or two pages, which is, there is no need for references. But you think that in future this thing will change, this, that, that, and all those things. So that is your statement. One to two pages. Then you have conclusions. One to two pages. So 11 plus 4, 15 pages gone. So now how many pages remaining? 15 pages remaining. So your main body fifteen pages. So again, what you do is again it is one, one point one, one point two, one point three, one point four. 1.5 so approximately 2 to 3 pages and like that you will go up to 8 points again one paragraph only you don't want to write too many paragraphs but now this goes 15 pages for each point it is 2 pages so now at the end of the day this is called the skeleton Whether it is chapter, review or anything, this is the skeleton. And once you follow the skeleton, so what I recommend all my students, even undergrad students write very beautiful articles. When they follow this, they write exactly what is told. And I, I, I would have shown, I would have brought my paper. A lot of papers are exactly they follow same things. And then 
ultimately what they their confidence is built because they have to write only one paragraph when the skeleton is ready they you know what happens most of the people like to copy paste which is plagiarism which is yeah. not possible but when i tell people write one paragraph they can write it easy but if i tell them write three pages copy paste is easy <laughs> and that's where the, so i convince them that write only one paragraph but create a skeleton first once you create the skeleton then you add meat on it yeah, yeah. and once you add the meat then you can create an elephant you can create a mice you can create a dog you can create a rabbit whatever you want to oh, so yes. most of the books or publication you find a common skeleton there and it helps just gracias oh <laughs> it help you the of for students for students it will be yeah. good idea for for for, for students for faculty for yeah for students i don't see faculty okay as it is our last lecture uh i would like to thank you especially thanks <laughs> for your uh, fantastic incredible amazing course uh, because i have learned a lot oh and i, and I, gracias, I know gracias. that i'm talking uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not wrong. Um, we are very, really, really uh, grateful to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And as you have written so many books, we have written one for you. Oh, okay. Very oh, fantastico. <laughs> Mucho fantastico. I'll take it. We like to give you this. Gracias. Ah. Gracias. Oh my God. Thank you very much. Gracias. I'll take it with me. I'll go and put it in my... You can... It is... To go to the book. It, yeah. into, into the... Your plants, maybe you can put it in... Yeah, yeah. No, I'll put it in my book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in my book. It could damage... Uh, no, gracias. Thank, thank you very much. And uh, the book. We have written a book for you. Oh, okay. And uh, we hope you love it. It's ah. <laughs> You have to pay them safely because they okay. deserve it. Thank you very much. Ah, <laughs> great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and I can remove this. You. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there is inside some. Ah! <laughs> I like that. So the kind is for you. <laughs> thank you very much. So I appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. No? And I, I don't know if somebody in the call wants to open the microphone and say something. Is welcome, very welcome. Can you do me a favor and take the picture <laughs> when he's giving me the gracias and gracias? <laughs> I remove them. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Good. And uh, both of you can join. We'll take a selfie. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are recording, so everything is good. Oh, okay. <laughs> That sounds good. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, anybody in the call? Did the uh, uh, okay? Somebody has written something. Uh, muchas gracias. Thank you very Perfect. much for your great enriching experience. Gracias. Okay. Thank you. So, si no, entonces muchas gracias a todos los que nos acompañaron uh, durante, juiciosamente durante el curso. Esperamos que lo hayan Sorry. disfrutado. Eh, y aprovechado al máximo igual contamos con las grabaciones así que quien se haya perdido alguna parte pues eh, simplemente nos comente y le podemos enviar y eh, bueno ya están disponibles las hemos puesto por el, por el grupo de whatsapp la lista de reproducción ahora vuelvo y la pongo de todas las 12 grabaciones y eh, también están disponibles todas las presentaciones los powerpoint el profesor Jaswan nos ha dejado disponibles las, en los slides, las powerpoints, o si alguno está interesado, pues nos escribe y se los compartimos encantados. Eh, por lo demás, pues muchísimas gracias a todos por habernos acompañado. A ver, hemos abierto los micrófonos, pero nadie se animó. Entonces, pues bueno, con esto nos despedimos. Hasta la próxima. Eh, hasta luego. Aquí alguien va a decir algo. Espera, que aquí... Hacia adelante, adelante. Adelante. Simplemente, sí, muchísimas gracias. Soy el principal profesor de Cerebrión en la iniciativa. Y bueno, creo que algunas de las charlas las tendré que haber diferido. Y bueno, aprovecharé el material. 
Muchas gracias por los soportes. Un saludo para todos. Any words to Professor Jaswan? Oh, really, thank you. It is a very complete description of the process. Also, uh, for now, we, we only want to thank, to thank you. Thank you, Professor. Oh, we got that, yes. Uh, thank you, Professor Nicolás. Uh, Karina Larcón is saying also, thank you very much. Uh, I felt uh, very happy uh, to be in your course. Uh, uh, I learned a lot. And uh, Lina also says a uh, very great experience. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Gracias. Okay. All set. All set. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>